For our video project, we decided to investigate the physics of bowling. Let's start with some background. A bowling ball is made from a combination of urethane plastic and reactive ricin. Ten-pin bowling balls have three holes drilled into them for gripping. For ten-pin bowling, regulating bodies allow for a maximum weight of 16 pounds and a maximum diameter of 8.6 inches. The length of a bowling lane is 18 meters. The lane is oiled to protect it from wear, especially during the initial sliding stage of the bowling ball, before it begins pure rolling. Now to the throw. The ball begins rolling with both an angular and linear velocity. During the first part of motion, the bowling ball slides along the lane. During this time, the rotational speed does not match its linear speed. Next, lane friction stops the ball from sliding and pure rolling begins. The main influence on the ball motion is friction, which is determined by the way the ball is made as well as the natural conditions of the lane. The lane can be oiled or non-oiled. The ball then hits the pins at an angle. The greater the angle, the greater the impact and the more pins that will fall. After the ball hits the pins, momentum is conserved because the collision is involving hard bodies. The forces involved to get the ball in motion include the weight of the ball, the forces applied by the muscles in the bowler's arm, forces applied by the fingers of the bowler to create the spit of the ball, mm -hmm. muscles in the bowler's legs to accelerate the ball, and, and the bowler forward. The forces involved once the ball is in motion include the weight of the ball and friction. Kinematics. With slipping, the velocity of the ball is equal to the angular velocity crossed with the position of the alley with respect to the ball. Without slipping, the velocity of the ball is equal to the velocity of the alley plus the velocity of the alley with respect to the ball. Since the alley isn't moving, the velocity of the ball is just equal to the velocity of the alley with respect to the ball. Kinetics. Translational kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. Rotational kinetic energy is equal to one half i omega squared. Assuming there is no slipping, kinetic energy is equal to the translational kinetic energy plus the rotational ki kinetic energy. For a spherical bowling ball, i is equal to two fifths m r squared. Omega is equal to velocity divided by the radius of the curve. The average underhand speed was 14.7 miles per hour. The average overhand speed was 16.1 miles per hour. The average grandma speed was 12.4 miles per hour. Overhand throws had the most slipping and therefore the highest velocity. Kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared plus 1 half i omega squared. I is equal to 2 fifths mr squared, or 0 0.013 kilograms meters squared. And the mass is equal to 2.72 kilograms. Underhand release. The angular acceleration was found to be 60.3 radians per second, and the linear velocity was 6.57 meters per second. These values were plugged into the kinetic energy formula, and the underhand release's kinetic energy was found to be 82.3 joules. Overhand release. The angular acceleration was found to be 66.1 radians per second, and the linear velocity was 7.2 meters per second. These values were plugged into the kinetic energy formula, and the overhand release's kinetic energy was found to be 98.8 joules. Grandma style release. The angular acceleration was found to be 51.0 radians per second, and the linear velocity was 5.56 meters per second. These values were plugged into the kinetic energy formula, and the grandma style's release's kinetic energy was found to be 58.9 joules. Our bowling skill level only allowed for us to do the overhand, the underhand, 
and the grandma releases. However, professional bowlers have the skill level required for other releases, such as the two-handed release. Normal bowlers use one hand. Yep, I use two. Double the power, double the spin, double the fun. I'm in! This is the Flying Eagle. The effect of angular velocity on linear velocity can be seen in the following clip. The ball that has the excessive spin to begin with has a slower linear velocity compared to the second ball he sends down the lane. This is the world's longest strike. <laughs>